All right, so you want to invest in REITs, but you know they're different than stocks. And you want to have that stable income, but you're not too sure how to analyze them. So here are four things that you need to do before investing in any type of REITs. The first one, look at the dividend triangle. It's a similar approach than what I have with stocks. However, you replace the earnings per share by the FFO per share or per unit. So you look at revenue growth, fund sum operation per share growth, and dividend growth. Once you have selected companies that are thriving, then you go into looking into their business model. It's really important to understand because REITs are operating in various industries. Could be apartments, could be industrial, could be um, retail, could be hotels, could be anything. So it's important to understand where they are operating and then you look at their diversification. So by tenants, so you don't want to have like a big tenants taking the old part and you want to also look if they're diversified geographically. So understanding the business model is number two, super important. Number three, look at the debt structure. So you want to make sure that the REIT has some properties that has space where they can do more remortgage. And the other thing is you want to make sure that there is a debt maturity that is being separated over several years. You don't want a REIT that will renew 25% of their debt in 23 because interest rates are going to kill their FFO per share and then your distribution will be at risk. Speaking of that, number four, you look at the distribution growth versus the payout ratio. And you're not gonna look at the regular payout ratio, but the FFO payout ratio or the AFFO payout ratio because they are based on funds from operation and not on earnings. Because if you look on earnings, that number doesn't mean anything for REITs because of their accounting structure. And then you're gonna always have the impression that this REIT is about to cut their dividend while it's not the case. Dividend Investors, bonjour, my name is Mike Hiroux and I'm the founder of Dividend Stocks Rock. I'm also a passionate investor and I have this YouTube channel to help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. And it's a pretty good thing, right? Because now you're gonna learn about analyzing REITs, so more conviction, and REITs are usually good for income, so it will help you enjoy your retirement at the same time. Today, I will use that four-step analysis model on three of three reads that I really like. The last one will be my favorite one. I'll let you guess what it is, but for now, let's take a look at Allied Properties Read. So ap.un.to, you can see the dividend triangle right here. I'm not showing the FFO per share here because the calculation with, with, with white chart doesn't work that much. Uh, when I saw it, it was like going down very fast in 22. And then I thought, let's look at the financials to see what's really going on. And then I discovered that the calculation used by YChart are not as precise as what we have in the financial statements. So whenever you have great fluctuation in any types of graph, any types of metrics, the good old trick of looking into quarterly earnings or annual statements to make sure that you get the baddest information is always the nicest thing that you can do. Moving on to the business model, Allied Properties is mostly an office read. So that explained the stock price drop that happened over the past two years. The market is worried about the occupancy rate. Right now we're at 90%, but things is the average lease term is 5.5 years. So it can tell you that there is a lagging effect here. So maybe we're going to see some tenants decided to not rent that much space next year or in two years from now and this is where the problem will start happening not right now maybe in two years so so far so good everything else is good the company has been able to be quite resilient during the pandemic and allied has been able to maintain and actually increase its distribution throughout the lockdowns it tells you that they are well established in their markets, mostly in Montreal and in Toronto. Why? Because they own pristine address. So whenever you have great locations, even though you may lose tenants, you're gonna have other tenants that will come in anyway. Moving on quickly to tenants diversification. Well, here you can sleep on your both years because you have only 17% of revenue generating by the top 10 tenants. So it's pretty much everybody or anybody that is renting Allied Properties um, buildings. You don't have to worry about this part. They don't have like one major tenant that could make the situation very weird at one point if they stop paying. That's not gonna happen with them. 
When you look at Allied debt maturity structure, it is well diversified throughout many years. We may have a big year in 26. Um, chances are the interest rate will have time to slow down at that time. So it's not a big of a worry. And the company is also showing a lot of room to remortgage some properties if they need to access cash quickly. And they also benefit from a very strong credit rating. Now we get to the point where I love the most is we talk about distribution growth. As you can see on this graph, most of the time it's increasing. However, during the financial crisis of 2008, the REIT has taken a break. So is it possible they take a break in the future? Definitely, but what I like to see here is even though this is a relatively large uh, REIT with a market cap of almost 4 billion, the stock price has been going down like there's no tomorrow, but they are a resilient REIT. They have been able to go through the financial crisis without cutting their distribution, and they were even able to increase the distribution even though we had lockdowns and a bunch of fear during the market crash of March 2020. Now, super important, let's take a look at the FFO payout ratio just to make sure that everything is in order and the company will be able to increase its distribution in the future. As you can see, both the FFO and the AFFO payout ratio are well in order. So while the company continue to increase distribution, FFO payout ratio of 72% for 22 and then 80% for, uh, for the, F the AFFO per share versus um, 70% and then 81% for the 2021. So basically pretty stable, even though they are able to increase their distribution. Do not expect huge increase, but considering everything, besides the fact that we have to look at the occupancy rate and how tenants will move in or move out throughout those locations, the rest of the light properties seems very solid. So the major risk, and there's no freelance in finance, is how the impact of having employees working from home will have an effect on their financials going forward. Keep in mind, it's a lagging effect. So it's not a slam dunk, but it's still a very solid REIT. Moving on to another very solid REIT that has not seen its stock price plummet over the past two years. Well, it's not great, but it's a lot better than Allied Properties. We're talking about Canadian Tire REIT. So CT REIT, crt.un.to. As you can see, revenues going up all the time, dividend going up all the time as well. So it is a definitely a great start. However, kind of funny because CT REIT is red and then they use a lot of red in the presentation, but this is also a red flag. It's all about Canadian Tire. Uh, the thing is, it's mostly a retail REIT, but if you look at their top 10 tenants besides Canadian Tire, it's about 4% of their revenue coming from other companies. So in other words, if Canadian Tire goes well, CT REIT will go well. And if it's the opposite, well then, it's going to be a problem. So when you invest in CT REIT, you need also to follow Canadian Tire because if not, you're pretty much investing blindly. They decided to keep that focus with Canadian Tire. I cannot really blame them because Canadian Tire is like one of the most solid retailers in Canada, but then it's still an additional risk because you have to follow two companies for the price of one. Looking at the debt structure, all things are good. Uh, maybe a little bit too much in 25 and 27, but it's not the end of the world. It's well diversified across many years. So I don't expect any problems for Canadian Tire. It's similar to Allied Properties. They know what they're doing. It's all about fixed rate. So they are well comfortable with what's going on. And as you can see in 23, very small portion of their debt is to be renewed. So the interest rate will not impact over the short period of term, will not impact the entire fund sum operation rates. Now, if we're looking about distribution, again, sounds very interesting. You can see that from 2014 to 22, it goes up all the time, but most importantly, the AFFO and the FFO per unit is also increasing accordingly. In other words, the read is growing and generating more money, but it's more money per unit, so they can afford to increase the distribution every year without any worries. And what I like the best about this part is, as you can see here, the AFFO payout ratio is going down while the distribution is always like a three, 4% increase every year. So over the long term, 
your distribution will match or even do better than inflation. So you will maintain your buying power, but the company still shows great payout ratios. It means that even if the interest rates remains high for a few years, which I'm not too sure it's going to happen, but let's say it, it, it's, it's happening until 25, 26. Well, then Kintyre will renew a part of its debt at a higher rate. It will affect the FFO payout ratios, but not too much. There's still plenty of room to maintain growth and at the same time maintain the distribution increase policy. Now moving on to my favorite read. Actually, it's the only one that I have in my portfolio because I'm more geared towards growth than on income and it's Great neat read, grt.un.to. Uh, before I start the analysis, please go in the comment. Let me know about your favorite read and why. You know, you've seen so far, I'm all about distribution increase and I'm all about the strong dividend triangle. Well, as you can see, great neat read going through the roof. The um, line for the distribution makes it a little bit hard to read because there was a generous special dividend payment in 2019, but every year the REIT is increasing its distribution and this is what I'm looking for when I'm out to invest in a company. So what's up with their business model? Well, it is an industrial REIT and it's similar to Kintyre, it, it, Kintyre REIT. It used to be a spin-off of real estate properties from Magna International. So if you go back in time in 2011, 94% of lease uh, square was given to Magna International. So that was a huge concentration risk. As opposed to CD REIT, management decided to diversify their exposure. So fast forward to September of 22, now we're talking about 21% of properties that are leased to Magna International, roughly 28 or 26% of revenue, if I remember correctly. Average lease term is 5.7 years and the occupancy rate is at 99%. So very high demand for those industrial properties, mostly um, linked to distribution and e-commerce. So you can think, well, it's not gonna slow down anytime soon. However, are they going to be able to maintain and 99% occupancy rate. So on top of the exposure to Magna International, which I'm not too worried about it because every quarter they decrease that exposure, but still it's a major part here. But that is one red flag. The second red flag is, are you able to maintain this type of occupancy rate all the time? Because if not, and you continue to invest in new development and getting more properties, well then at one point you may have oversupply. And if you end up with oversupply, well, those properties cost a lot if they are empty, right? Looking at their debt structure, again, well-managed REIT. You can see that it's pretty equal every year from 23 to 2030, which I kind of like because it's really like on the long-term period, never a big year. So whatever happened with interest rate, it's not gonna be about a problem for Granite. They will be able to see it coming, manage accordingly, and not create big surprises like dividend cuts for their shareholders. And you can see here that when you look at the distribution versus the payout ratio, and sometimes I just love those companies that are able to match more information into one graph. So you can really see how the FFO and AFFO payout ratio fluctuates over time versus the actual distribution. In this case, it's pretty much stable around 75, 80%, but the distribution increase all the time. So then you have a read that is definitely thriving with strong revenue growth, strong FFO per share growth, and then strong distribution. And at this point, this is the type of business I really want in my portfolio. This is a type of investment that I know that regardless if the stock price goes up or goes down, I know that the business behind it is very solid. I know it's gonna go through the potential recession we're gonna kick in. They're gonna face higher interest rate, but they're still strong. And moving forward in 10 years from now, they will likely be a lot bigger and pay me a lot more every month because that's one thing that I love about Greeny. They're paying monthly. So, dividend investors, hit the comments. Let me know which is your favorite REIT and why, and let's start this discussion. And until next Thursday, don't forget to stay invested.